Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Eric and today we're going to be making queso fresco. Queso fresco is a Latin American cheese that translates to fresh cheese. And as far as cheeses go, this one can be made pretty quick because it doesn't require aging. So if you like cheese or if you'd like to learn how cheese is made, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell as I show you how to make cheeses from all over the world in a way you've never seen it before. Let's get started with queso fresco. To get started, we need to sanitize all of our equipment. So everything that's gonna be used in this cheese making process is either gonna be boiled for about 20 minutes or it's gonna be sprayed with a sanitizer. In this case, I'm using one called Iota for. We're gonna be using whole milk for this recipe and we just wanna make sure that it's not ultra pasteurized and we're also gonna use an immersion circulator to keep our water bath at a consistent temperature. And then finally, we're gonna add an external thermometer so that we can monitor our temperature. For this cheese, we wanna keep it at 90 Fahrenheit or 32 degrees Celsius. And our immersion circulator is gonna help us do that. Now that everything is set up, let's look at a couple of the ingredients that we're gonna need. The first ingredient is calcium chloride. Now this isn't necessary if you're using raw cow's milk, but if you're using pasteurized milk, it is necessary to help restore the calcium to the milk, which is gonna give you a firmer curd, making it a whole lot easier to work with. We're also gonna be using a little rennet to set our curds, and in the description box below, I'm gonna have a link to all the different things you need to make this cheese. So our milk has been heated to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's now time to begin. We're gonna start by adding our calcium chloride. And every addition that we make, we're gonna stir until it's well incorporated with an up and down motion. Next, we're gonna be adding a mesophilic culture or a moderate temperature culture. I'm gonna be using cultured buttermilk, but any mesophilic culture will work. This is gonna add a lot of flavor. It's also gonna extend the shelf life of your queso fresco. So after mixing well, and in this case, I think I mixed for about two minutes, we're gonna put a top on it and set a timer for 45 minutes. This is gonna allow that culture to ripen. Once it's finished ripening, and we're talking about 45 minutes later, it's now time to add our rennet. Our rennet has been diluted in distilled water, and we're just going to sprinkle that over the surface of our milk. It is important to know that the rennet begins to work immediately. So as soon as you have that rennet into your milk, you're going to want to incorporate it as well as you can with an up and down motion by mixing your milk for about 60 seconds. This is gonna to help to evenly distribute the rennet throughout the milk, and it's gonna give you a really nice curd once it's time. So after 60 seconds, stop mixing and go ahead and set a 45 minute timer and leave your milk undisturbed. After 45 minutes, what we're looking for is a clean break, and that's when you know you can cut the curd. So let me show you what a clean break looks like. You could do this with your spatula, um, that's not the best view. Let me do it this way. A clean break should have no residual on the knife. Whey should start seeping out from the cut that you've made and everything should look relatively clean. If it looks feathery or if it looks like the curds haven't set yet, let them firm up for another 10 minutes and then check again. But once you get that nice clean break, slowly cut your curd into small squares. This entire process should take about five minutes. You don't want to do it too fast. And once you have your curds completely cut, you're going to want to let them heal. So as soon as you're done cutting, set a timer for five minutes and allow your curds to rest. This is what it should look like after five minutes. They would have settled just a little bit to the bottom. And now it's time to begin mixing. So we're going to set a 60 minute timer as we gently and slowly start to stir our curds. At this stage, our curds are very fragile. So you just want to stir every few minutes keeping them from matting up. Our curd temperature is at 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and over the next 60 minutes while our curds cook, they're gonna to begin to firm up. Your curd's gonna be ready when you press on it and it has moderate resistance, and when you break one in half, it should be firm throughout. Once your curds have finished cooking, set a 15 minute timer and leave them undisturbed. After those 15 minutes, you can go ahead and strain out your curds in a cheesecloth lined colander. Drain the curds for 30 minutes. I like to set a timer and roughly at about halfway through those 30 minutes, give your curds 
a little shake. We want to make sure that they drain properly, so just break them up very gently with your hands. After our curds have drained for 30 minutes, it's time to add salt. So we're just going to weigh our curd mass and we're going to add 3% salt to that. Okay, so our curds weigh 1,338 grams. We're adding 3% salt to that, which comes to around 40 grams of salt. When you add salt, just make sure that the salt that you add doesn't have any additives like iodine. And all I'm going to do is sprinkle a little bit over my curd mass and gently mill it or break up the curd structure with my hands until I get all the salt added. By milling the curds for this particular cheese, you're disrupting the protein matrix, which makes it easier to crumble once it's been formed. And having a nice crumbly queso fresco is what this cheese is all about. We're now in the final stages of this cheese as we place our curds into a cheese mold. I'm using a stainless steel cheese mold from the sausage maker lined with a sanitized cheesecloth. And we're just going to begin by putting those curds into that mold until it's completely full. I'm now going to put a follower directly on top and then weigh it down. Be sure to check out the description box below for a recipe and full step-by-step -step guideline on how to make this cheese. We're going to let that initial press happen for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, we're going to unwrap it, flip it, rewrap it, and then place it into our Dutch cheese press from the sausage maker. Here, we'll be increasing the weight, and over the next six to seven hours, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to unwrap it, flip it, rewrap it, and place it back into that press. Slice is very easy and it has that classic queso fresco smell, a very fresh smell. Great texture. Let's go ahead and just take a little piece off of it and give it a taste. See what that's like. Wow, this cheese is so good. It is slightly salty, a little sour. You can really taste the milk and it's absolutely delicious. Let me show you my favorite way to enjoy queso fresco. This is something we had growing up in Mexico all the time. It's a authentic Mexican enchilada. This is just raw onions with queso fresco crumbled right on top, rolled in an oil softened corn tortilla. Very simple, authentic, and absolutely delicious. I hope you get a chance to try it. Bien provecho. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions on how to make queso fresco, leave them in the comment section below. And if you got anything out of this video, a thumbs up would be helpful. We post new videos each week, so don't forget to click that notification bell to be notified of each one of our uploads. Thanks again. We'll see you in the next one.